Aloha, Big Island. Nice to see you. Thanks for inviting us from Maui. Happy to be here. Going to talk to you today about emotional intelligence and in particular, something called relationship management. What is relationship management? Heck, what is emotional intelligence? I've had a lot of people say to me, emotional intelligence, Michael, my God, when I get emotionally worked up, my intelligence goes right out the window. I say things and do things that I almost immediately regret. And then looking back, I'm embarrassed, sometimes even humiliated. And you're talking about emotional intelligence? Yeah. Because in order for the intelligence in our emotions, often called wisdom in philosophy, to become available to us, we have to learn to manage our emotions. Now, I'm going to talk as uh, well as said about the four stages or steps to emotional intelligence, but I'd like to begin by straightening out, settling once and for all, a point where I think there's a lot of confusion. And that's the idea that success will create happiness and love in your life. And it's not true, and I hear people who should know better saying, well, I'll be happy when this is done. I'll be happy when I've attained this, when I've accomplished this, when I get to my goal, then I'll be happy, and they defer their happiness, and guess what? They're never really happy. And without relationships, well, we've got nothing. How are you going to have love and happiness if your relationships aren't working? And a core principle in emotional intelligence is your relationships are not going to work if you don't understand yourself. And unless and until you know yourself, the ancient Greeks said that even before their time, know thyself was inscribed over the oracle to Apollo at Delphi in ancient Greece. This is Plato and Socrates saying, yeah, back in the day, right? You'd go to church and you'd have a problem with somebody in your life and on the way in over the oracle it says, hey buddy, this is really about you. Responsibility is what we're talking about today. And so if success does not create loving relationships and happiness, then what does? being responsible for the love and happiness in your life with emotional intelligence. That's my position today, and I've got at least two important takeaways for you today, maybe more than that. Maybe the first one is the idea that if success does not create happiness and love, and I know you're arguing with me in your mind right now, and yet let me say, how many successful people do you know who are miserable? Who are never happy, or who are only occasionally happy. It's like the weather. How you doing? Because we're never really sure. You're successful, you're powerful. Doesn't that mean you're empowered? Why aren't you happy? Why are you miserable? Why are you blaming me? Why, 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 why are you taking your misery out on me? So if we know many successful women and men who are not happy, let's drop this meme that happiness is a function of success and turn it around and understand that happiness and love is the way to success. Happiness and love is the way. In the 60s, we learned in the peace movement, there is no way to peace, that peace is the way. And so it is with happiness and love. There is no way to become happy or to create or manifest love in your life without empowering yourself by saying, I am a happy person. And not only do I have the love I'm looking for, I am the love that I'm looking for. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to do that today. First of all, these four steps or four stages to emotional intelligence, they are self-awareness, and self-management, and then social awareness and relationship management. So the first two are about know thyself, 
And the other two are about empathy and caring about other people and giving what it is you want to receive. We all know these principles, these axioms about you reap what you sow. Nobody ever taught you that you should sow what you reap. Nobody said it's receive and give, but we often behave that way. What does it mean to be self-aware? It means to know yourself, to understand yourself, and then the second part, to manage those feelings. How do you do that? Well, you do it essentially by feeling safe and relaxed. There was a time in the history of humanity where meditation by any name, contemplation, introspection, rumination, reflection, 60s, we called it spacing out or spacing in, but going to that altered level of awareness where things made sense, where what had appeared to be conflicts now came together in harmonious ways. And instead of everything being this or that, it started looking like this and that. Well, the time has come, even out here in the middle of the ocean, in Hawaii, where our lives are so overstimulated that we have to have some sort of practice of moving into these altered states of expanded awareness. And I've studied scores, hundreds of meditation, contemplation, and introspection techniques, and I'm here to tell you there's three parts to every single one of them, and three messages to the brain that are saying, you know, I realize you're overstimulated and you're confused and you think you're in danger, but you're really not. You're just overconfused and stimulated to an excessive degree. Those three messages are, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to breathe slow, deep breaths. And I'm going to actually let go of muscular tension and feel safe and relaxed. Now let's all do that right now, except uh, hold off on the close your eyes bit. You can uh, practice that at any time. Just right now, take a nice slow breath and hold as you peek and then as you exhale, uh, identify as the one who lets go. And when you begin to do this and practice this in your life, in the moment, anytime you feel anxious or nervous, or as a formal practice for 10 or 15 minutes a day, an amazing thing begins to happen. Talk about liberation and freedom. You begin to recognize something marvelous, that your feelings are your feelings. I know that sounds really silly and, and, and insipid and stupid on the surface. What do you mean? My feelings are my feelings. I'm saying your emotional feelings are a response to your situation. Nobody did them to you. Now, I'm sure there's people in here that know this and others who think they know it. But it's still incredibly profound to be able to give up. He made me feel this way. Well, she made me feel this way. Well, they did this to me. Well, if it wasn't for this circumstance or this situation, I wouldn't be feeling this way. And then what do we do? We fixate on trying to control other people. Some people have guns because they want to control other people. Some people threaten. Some people hold grudges. There's all kinds of strategies to try to influence other people to get what you want. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is take responsibility for the fact that the feeling came from you. I know it appears that somebody hurt you if they say something mean and nasty and insulting, but it's like somebody poking you where you're already bruised. And you push them away and say, oh, you hurt me. And they say, well, that shouldn't have hurt you. And you go, oh, yeah, well, uh, I got this bruise. You know, I fell into a doorknob and, oh, but damn. It really only hurts when you push it there. And you say, well, then I didn't hurt you. And you say, well, yeah, you did. And you say, well, you were already hurt. And each and every one of us is already hurt. And when other people hurt us emotionally, they're just poking the bruise. But the good news 
is instead of change in them, you can heal the bruise. So if somebody says something mean and nasty and hurtful and insulting to you, you can whisper to yourself inside, that's not true. I'm really not. I remember a time when I thought I was stupid and clumsy and not pretty enough and inadequate, but it's really not true, you see? And then the other part of emotional intelligence, the empathy. This is simply caring about other people. And now you've empowered yourself to care. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, what, 60, 70 years ago, wrote a book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And what it comes down to is simply one principle. Just sincerely love other people. Care about them. If love has been stolen from us by advertisers and pop site gurus, then let's steal it back. Let's talk about the many, many qualities of love, including caring. And you can take responsibility for the love and the happiness in your life. Let me leave you with a little story. Imagine two people on a lifeboat out here in the middle of the Pacific. God forbid their boat sank and they have no life preservers, and they're in this little rubber life raft, and they confess to each other, I can't swim. The other one says, you know, frankly, neither can I. What are we gonna do? Can't swim, no life preservers. If we lose this, this, this life raft, we're going down. Lug, 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 we're, we're fish bait. And they think about their dilemma for a while, and suddenly one of them says, I know, I, I got it. I have a brilliant insight. I know what we're going to do. I'm going to save you, and then you can save me. Or if you want to do it the other way around, if you promise to save me, then I'll save you. And I used to ask my clients and my students, why is that absurd? And fewer than half could even tell me what was ridiculous about that? They knew it was, but they couldn't find the words because we're not familiar with the idea of real responsibility for yourself. And you say, well, I would never make a bargain like that, Michael. That is really inane. That is really childish. And let, uh, how many of us have gone out into the world lonely and empty, unhappy, without love in our lives, looking for a relationship to complete us, and finding another lonely, empty person that's saying, I'll fill you up if you'll fill me up. I'll love you if you love me. And the funniest thing is, initially it might even seem to work, but after a while those empty spots come back because they're yours. The result of you not really knowing what's so wonderful and lovable and truthful and wise about you. And now, because we gave them credit for filling us, now we blame them. How come you don't love me anymore? There was a time when you filled me. And they're going to say, funny, you should mention it, because I was just thinking the same thing. What happened? We can have happiness and love in our lives. We can put our feet directly on the path to success and anything that you want in your life when you use emotional intelligence to take ownership of your feelings. They are your response to the world. It's not being done to you. Aloha, mahalo, thank you very much.